Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. The Judaism school of thought. Judaism always influenced Hellenism as Hellenism influenced Judaism. That was the middle part where the Greek people could still have dominion over the Hebrews. You understand where I'm coming from? So, Judaism and Hellenism always influenced each other in one way or another. Why? Because like I told you, he gets the idea from the above Alexander, puts it and sells it down to the guys on the grassroots, such that it's a bottom-up approach, not up-bottom approach, okay? And people down here buy the idea, and all of them start to exchange ideas. And in the lines of exchanging ideas, there are certain schools of thought that the Hellenists had, but were originally of the Judaizers. And later on we realized that Judaizers as well later started to also adopt a certain school of thought that was from the Hellenists, okay? And that is what formed predominant church during that time, the time of Paul. And that church still continues today. I'm going to prove it in a while. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Predominant scripture, Philippians 3.6. Let's read there. The dominant scripture, he says, uh, let's begin from 5, verse 5. Circumcised on the, read, circumcised on the, of the stock of, this is Paul, of the tribe of, a Hebrew of, a starting the law, a Pharisee, and I'm coming there. Next, uh -huh. concerning zeal, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. You see that? If you want to put a certain righteousness which is in the law, Paul could have fulfilled all the righteousness according to the law. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Galatians 1.13. Galatians 1.13. But Galatia, a Uh-huh. He says, For you have heard of my past conversation in time past in the Jews, religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. In the Jews, in the Jews, religion. Amplified. Amplified. Uh -huh. You have heard of my earlier career. Read. Uh -huh. And of in the what is that Jewish religion? Judaism. How I persecuted and abused the church of God, furiously and extensively and with fanatical zeal, did my best to make havoc of it and destroy it. That means he did not only have the Hellenistic point of view, he also beheld the Judistic line up squarely to a point where the zeal in him could kill. Extensive havoc on Paul. You understand? But he had the Old Testament dispensation. So, we need to understand the concept of Judaism. What does the Judaism embrace? You understand? They claim their lineage from Judah, the guy who took over the royal scripture and line of priesthood from the line of Jacob, right? Now, this is the thing about, this is their concept. And we're going to come back to the, today I even intend to show you their doctrine and creed. Okay? But let me show you their principle. Their principle is that they believe in the Abrahamism, that is the concept of the one God. Okay? Abraham believed in one God, he worshipped the sun, but he left the sun God and worshipped it in one God. So they had a faith in Abrahamism. The concept of believing in one God, you see? They have distributed it this way. When Abrahamism comes in, the concept of believing in that one God, faith in God, Abraham believing, okay? There is a principle of the prophets coming in, which is, they call it propheticism in their line. Propheticism is, 
the prophets are there to give us direction to this one God. You understand where I'm coming from? The prophets are there to give us direction to this one God. Because if we don't have the prophets, then how can we do it? But there's also a line of priesthood there, where the priests take a certain position in God to help us align our relationship. You understand? You get where I'm coming from? Now, most importantly, if the prophets are giving us direction, the most important prophet in Judaism, who is it? Moses. They call them the Mosaic Principles. Okay? The Mosaic Principles, or the concept of Moses, is very simple. He is one of the greatest prophets we have. I'll show it to you in the Creek of Judaism. So because he's one of the greatest prophets that we have, everything, anything that can be done before or after him, nothing can ever be compared to anything called Moses. So Moses' law is the most underlying principle and doctrine of Judaism, of the Judaistic point of view. Now because you have Abraham, the one true God, to the prophets who give us direction, the priests first put them the other side because they later come in a certain way, okay? But understand the prophets. For them, their lines are the prophets. Priests never wrote, okay? You understand? To them, priests never what? Never wrote. So if they are following this Bible, they follow it this way. Abraham, our father, you understand? The prophets that give us direction to God through our father Abraham, who taught us to love one God, then after we have the Mosaic lines, we need the rabbis. Who are these? The guys who are going to teach us the way of how to walk in the Mosaic law. And the Mosaic law, which comes after the directions of the prophets, Moses being a prophet, and the prophets who are leading us to the one God, the testimony of Abraham. You get what I'm trying to tell you? So it's Abrahamism, propheticism, Mosaic principles, then rabbinism. Then from the rabbinism, you have now a splitting of lines. The, the lines are splitting with three guys. There is a line of guys called Pharisees. Okay? There's a line of guys called Sadducees. And there's a line of guys called Essenes. Now, if you follow the root word for Pharisees, you actually realize the root word for Pharisees is actually the separated ones. But I've read all the commentary to find out separated from what or who. Nobody comments on that, even themselves. They don't say what they're separated to or what they're separated from. They're just the separated ones, Pharisees. They're separate. They bore a certain line in Exodus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me show it to you. Because they prove a line of holiness, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus 19, verse 6. Exodus 19, verse 6. What does it say? And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Now, the priests are Pharisees. Okay? That's why I said let's put the priestly line on the other side. Because this is where it comes in. You understand? So, Abrahamism, prophetic, mosaic, rabbinism, rabbinism, but the sects. They have sects. They have groups of sects, groups of people who believe a certain line of things. Okay? So to them, they are separated. Okay? Now, because they are saying you shall be unto me, because that's the underlying line of the principles of the Pharisees. They say you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Which line do they pick most predominantly? Holiness. They are holiness people. They are holiness people. They are holiness people. But they don't speak of a holiness as Romans 6.22. Their understanding of holiness is not a 6.24. Their understanding of holiness is command. What does Romans 6.22 say? But now being made free from sin, are you hearing me? And become servants of God, you have, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Paul, according to the gospel of Paul, holiness is supposed to be a fruit. But to them, in Exodus 19.6, it's a command. You get the difference? Ah, do you get the difference? So, to the grace minister, holiness is supposed to be a fruit of the seed of righteousness. To the Pharisee, holiness is supposed to be a command. He must work out. So he works out his way to holiness. That's why you'll hear the same Judaistic points of view coming even in this century saying righteousness is a gift, but holiness has to be worked out. Have you had people who say that? They say righteousness is a gift, but holiness has to be worked out. What is the instance? 
Exodus. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You be unto me. You shall be unto me. So to them, they received that as a commandment. In the mind of God, it shouldn't have been the mind. But they received that as a commandment. So there are many people who are told, if you go around and you hear people say, young people be holy, people be holy, be holy, be holy, be holy, be holy. They are putting it on people to be holy because they realize that holiness is a line that a man has to apply himself to the actions of producing this thing called holiness set apart. Okay? And we're saying we are not justified by works, but by faith. Period. If what you do is what approves your holiness, why do you need Jesus? To just hit the other half so you can conclude the other half? No. Only believe. You see the salvation of? So you see where I'm coming from? So the airline and school of thought is very simple. Holiness. Now, they always have those tenets, one of which was tithe. Okay? They honored the Sabbath very zealous when it comes to Sabbath. That is the same group of people, you meet Jesus meet healing on Sunday, and then they tell you, is it lawful for you to heal on the Sabbath? Who are those? Pharisees. They have a problem. They observe their holiness, their holiness, okay? So they have a very long law and code of living a certain line of moral life and being so straight and right and perfect. You understand? That gives them a certain underlying principle of the thought that they are better than the rest. You understand? Because their principle of obedience is through the righteousness which is in the law. It's in the law, not outside the law. Now when Romans tell you, and now a righteousness without the law has been established, a righteousness of God without the law. In fact, the Bible says, Romans 3, and now a righteousness of God without the law has been established and it has been testified by the prophets. They have a problem there. Romans 3. Uh -huh. Now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The Judistic guy has a problem. Because the prophet, Moses, and the other prophets, to him, did not teach a righteousness of God without the law. Moses spoke a righteousness of the law. Now when Paul tells you that the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets, Paul is actually telling you, you can go in the mosaic principles and find a righteousness of God without obeying the Ten Commandments. They have a problem with that. Why? Because their way of obedience is simple. Moses became predominantly the prophet that we carry because we obey the laws of Moses. So when you find a Pharisee, he is righteous in the law. That's why Paul says, I have a righteousness. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, I am blameless. This is where he's coming from. This is where he's coming from. But to find a man who he has a righteousness in the law, blameless, meaning he doesn't steal and kill and commit adultery, thanks, do any of those things. But he tells you, even the time when I was a hundred percent straight morally, I counted all those things but laws for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, for whom I've counted all things but done, but that I may win Christ. Paul is actually telling you, I've been at a point where I've been straight, blameless, up squarely, but I still need a God. That's the beginning of grace. Beginning of grace is bigger than what you can do or what you can't do. He found a man who has committed adultery. He says, he without sin cast the first stone and they can't beat him. And many people know that line of grace. But there's also a grace line where a man was blameless concerning the law. That righteousness, that is according to the law. It's not the of God, but it's according to the law of Moses. There is a man who has not killed, has not committed adultery, has not abused. He's a hundred percent straight. That is a poor, but he still tells me, <laughs> I counted it nothing. I counted it useless that I may win Christ. Now there's a middle guy there saying, how can he count moral authority useless to win a Christ we don't believe in? There's a bigger problem there. You get where I'm coming from? So the issue of moral court for the Pharisees is very serious. The issue of tithes is very serious. The issue of Sabbath is very serious. They are separated. They are the separated people. The Pharisee, they walk Pharisee. They think Pharisee. They reason Pharisee. They pray Pharisee. But you realize that according to the social, political, and economical structures of Greece, 
There was a point where Alexander had provided for all these sects. Because that's the only way you can keep them under you. Put a little culture of Greek in them. You understand? Exalt and grow them according to your principles of the Greek people. They also have a certain way of attaining a certain position. That is why they had authority. Priests had an authority to go to Caesar and tell him this guy is blasphemed and he has to listen. To a point where Pilate is stoned between, he has had the man's case, the man is innocent, but there is a sustained system that has provided for them to have a certain advantage over the normal guy. That Pilate has to say, okay, you judge him under your law, I can't judge the guy. I've gotten to a point where the guy is innocent, but I even fear to free him. Why? Because they have also been given a certain leadership line. And that's why I told people, it's wonderful for church to have authority in the political arena. But it's another thing, if church people become politicians, where now the state determines even what is spiritual, there becomes a bigger problem than some of you think. So, the separated ones, okay? Now, in the group of the separated folk, there came out an elite group, a folk who took deeper to study the law of Moses, to study the culture as according to the patterns of what was said during that time as the syllabus of knowing God. Those came out, those guys bust what you call the scribes. So that the land, the, um, there was a group of land Pharisees who were also scribes. They, they were smart guys. They were not just guys who, who were separated to holiness and tithing and Sabbath, but these were guys who were trained. If you go to the lines of being trained, you realize that these guys were deeply rooted in the mosaic law. As in, that's the principle. From the time the child is young to the time the child is old, they only know one thing. Moses. 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 They only know nothing except Moses. You understand? They have grown up knowing everything that pertains to Moses. Now, something amazing happened. Out of the wise guys in the Pharisee line, okay, the wise Pharisees, which were scribes, they were called the wise men, separated. They come out men who learned how or learned a line of creating laws out of the Torah, out of Moses' ministry. They get in there, they create extra laws and principles that are not necessarily written in the original manuscript, but they are wise men and so they have to be listened to. So they also got another line of extra laws that the wise men initiated. That's some of you if you go and try to look for something called the Talmud. Eh? The line of the Talmud is it's equivalent to what the Islamic guy would call the Hadith. The Hadith is not the Quran necessarily, but the Hadith are extra teachings, not necessarily given by the inspiration of Allah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but extra teachings that the Quranic faith gives and they must have been dropped by wise men. The author of Hadith is known. You get the principle. So like the Muslims have the Hadith line, the Pharisees also have the Talmud. It's the same principle. Now I'll be explaining this thing. If you're Muslim, you realize they share the same things. Same thing. Why do they share the same things as the Muslim? The underlying principle of cosmopolitanism, according to Alexander and Socrates, that we are one nation and therefore you are what I am, I am who you are. Your God is my God, we just have different names. Jupiter for the Greeks, uh, for the Romans, and Zeus for the Greeks. But if we have a certain line of apprehension of these things, the spirit of cosmopolitanism can actually prove that it is one God. You understand? That is why you hear the lines of the Tammuz, Osiris, and Osas, there are three, those three gods. But their lines of that in the Asian line are trying to actually copy the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You get it. Those are the Asian religions. That's what they want to do. That's a certain principle that they're looking after. The underlying line, they want to prove to the people that you might be Christian, I might be Muslim, you might be Baptist, I might be this, you might be that, but we all have one God. Okay? There is a line of confusion there. Why? Because it has given healthy and unhealthy compromises in the gospel. Certain people do certain things saying, Kasta, we have one God. Let me put on a rosary as long as we serve the one God. It's okay to put on a 
this and put on a that. I can first once in a while and pray with guys in the Islamic faith. Because anyway, we all have schools of thought, but if we go back to this whole issue, it's all one God. Just being worshipped differently by his people. No, sir. No. That's why after this someone you realize that what Judaism thinks is not what you think. We don't have the same God with Judaists. We don't have the same God with Muslims. I don't have the same God with the Roman Catholic. Me. My opinion. My opinion. That's why I don't use a rosary. Mary is not the way to the Father. Jesus is. He is the way, the truth, and life. No man gets to the Father except by him. I'm sorry. That's my principle. That's how I believe. If you still think Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, because she's his mother, she will... She, that's your problem. Me, I don't believe in that kind of God. Okay? I don't believe in a God whose person that has become the mediator for me toward that God did not shed blood. Mary did not shed blood. And she was not the only virgin woman. There were many more virgin women. And there are still many virgin women. And they shall be up to the end. So what makes her special? Because she carried the... The seed. That's what they say. But she carried a seed. And the Bible tells you the seed is the life. The seed actually carries the blood. So there is nothing about Jesus in Mary. There's nothing about Jesus in Mary. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you understand up to this point? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So they have the Talmud. And in there is what they call the Halakha teachings. And these things are just extra laws that the wise men invented, like the Islam guys invented Hadith on top of the Quran, for just these ordinances to control people and put them under a particular order. But because they were invented by the wise men who are Pharisees and owed allegiance to a higher power of the Greek and Romans, you know the consequence of that? The consequence of that is that there are certain things that the kings would influence some of the down people here to do such that they can provide for the Greek culture and rule them in the institution they've been given, not necessarily in line with the mosaic, but they can get something they can borrow from the mosaic to rule you. You understand? You get the concept. A guy can get something that is in the Bible and then use it to... You understand? It's like um, the other day someone played for me this movie called 12 Years a Slave. Now there's this part where there's this white master who opens the scripture in, and, and then starts to speak about the servants and masters. And then he says, if you all show this, this, which word does he use? Disappoint or disregard? He says, if you shall disregard your master, then shall you receive lashes. Okay? He quotes the scriptures and lashes the black woman almost to death and is quoting a scripture. He's using something from the Bible to establish his own interest and then pass on something to the other people. Anything that comes from the scriptures but is not inspired by truth, but human pursuit to take advantage of that which is truth, will always lead to the destruction of people. And that's what the Pharisees used to do. That's why they handed over your Lord. You get where I'm coming from? You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So the Halakal teachings from the Talmud up to today, that you think is still in those Pharisees. Then there was another line of people, oh, and scribes, the land scribes. Then there was another little group of people called the Sadducees. In fact, the root word for Sadducees was the righteous ones. <laughs> but without Christ, you see, these guys are interesting. I also went through all the commentaries, and I'm telling you what I've read. I read all the commentaries, and I could not realize, I could not find the source of their righteousness. It's not there. Consequently, meaning, it's their own righteousness. Now, the Sadducees refused a bit to agree with the Pharisees. How? For them, they refused those other extra Talmuds and, and Halakha. Right? Halakha. They refused the Halakha and the Talmud, those extra wise things. And then they say, ah, for us, what is here is what is here. But they also still have the Mosaic principles to the letter of serve your beard cut your trousers, don't, don't make it dirty. Same thing the Muslims have. Same thing. Women covering their hair. Same thing the Muslims have. Now if you go to the lines of that, you realize that the author of the whole Sadducee line was Jonathan, a brother to God, who used to call John Maccabees. You understand? Maccabees. Now that, 
that the whole line of services came out in the Maccabean era, if, so to speak. Maccabean. Maka. Maka. You see that? Where the Muslims be? Mecca. So it's Maccabean. That's why some schools of thought still join and get the writings in. That's why there are some Bibles that have the book of Maccabees. So you understand where that is from? Maccabean. Schools of thought. So, Jonathan, the brother of John, Maccabean, or Maccabee, is the guy who now invents the whole idea of services. He says, Pharisees is a wonderful, they're doing a great job, blah, 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 but me, anything called wise men. Why? Because these guys had realized in the sect, eh? that these guys had gone beyond what even Moses taught, but still could quote Moses to manipulate men out of what could provide for the Greek and any other thing and their own personal interests. And it's Alexander inclusive. So he said, no, for us we only want the law, the mosaic. But still, they are following the mosaic to the letter. They have the Levitical books. Eh? Those things of a woman who is not supposed to pray and come to church because she's in, is in her periods. Those things of not sleeping with a woman who is in her periods. You know those things, they have those. Eh? In fact, some, those things have still been born. The schools of thought are still in the churches. That's why there are certain churches which say, we don't allow girls to put on trousers. They are copying something in the scriptures in the old Levitical that is saying that a woman shall not put on what befits of a man and a man shall not put on what befits of a woman. Same principle. Same principle. It's just been inculcated and thrown in the different religions and it has just continued. If you say the Pharisees and their zeal for the Sabbath, it's the same principle for the Seventh-day Adventists. Nothing else. Somebody followed the Sabbath line and another one took the tithing line, another one took the fasting lines, and another one followed the holy line of holy living by your way and not the way of Christ, a righteous way by your way, not the righteousness of Christ. It's the same thing when you go now to the Roman Catholic faith, Adventists, Mormon, Jehovah Witnesses, you'll find the Judaism thing spreading across and the Hellenistic thing spreading across. It's how now these other religions come in. Many of them still borrow from the original line, where I'm coming from. And for example, I'll give you an example. You remember the lines where the cleansing ceremonies of the priests? Where they used to splash things on people? Haven't you seen that in other faiths? Haven't you even seen it in the Muslims, burning incense, cleansing people? Same thing. It doesn't change. It's just the same mindset. They borrow one of here and another of there, and it's always behind certain people particular individuals, not Christ. That's why I gave you the examples of the Jonathans. Particular individuals are not Christ. Then out of them, again, another sect was formed from there called the Essenes. Now, many people don't know that the Essenes exist, but the Essenes were people who are not necessarily priests, are like the Sadducees were. Remember, the Sadducees claimed a higher dimension of priesthood than the no more. Pharisees. Why? Because the Pharisees were by certain things worked out. But the Sadducees always joined a certain line called the Zadokites. Some people even in certain cultures up to today still call them the Zadokites. Because they borrow the priesthood of the guy who used to be a priest to David. Zadok. Okay? Now, Zadok is translated as he that imputes righteousness. He, the God that imputes righteousness. Now, for them they call themselves the righteousness one without God. You understand? but by following God's commandments. You get the difference? For them, they follow God's commandments and they are made righteous. But they claim a higher class of priesthood because they claim that there is still a lineage of the Zadokites that came on passing through them and has multiplied in their tribe for them to be Sadducees. You understand? But the Essenes are not borrowing the lines of the Pharisees. They are not borrowing the lines of the Sadducees, but they are also men of moral law. You understand? They are men of moral law. Now, these were sons of priests. They didn't dream of being Pharisees, but they were sons of Pharisees and devout Jews. They also formed a certain class of guys called the Essenes. So the Essenes are guys, for them, they also used to have a moral code. They used to put on white, eh? representing their purity, because they always claimed the lines as the pure ones. Okay? They used to claim a certain line of purity, you understand? So you get the school of thought where certain people are still putting on white things eh? for them to be approved as pure. Guy killed, murdered, adulterated, did everything, but by putting on a certain white thing, he presents a certain line of being. Come on, somebody. They have a certain white line of, they put a certain line of white. They had a line of purity. 
they had a line of um, of also being the mosaic but they were also remunerated for having lived right so there was a particular treasury that was set by the powers that be for them to be remunerated in that way that means they were righteous straight low abiding one but they were rich they were also rich but they didn't claim the line of pre priests and Sadducees. Priests and Sadducees also had a class of wealth. Because that's the only way you can keep them under your rule. Feed them with your food. Change their language. You understand? And change their names. It's the same principle that uh, the guy did to, the, to Daniel, Belteshazzar, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He says if you change their language, feed them with the king's food, and then give them new names, after three years they shall be able to serve. So the man Alexander and all them kings that come after are using the same principle. You understand? They change the language and all these kinds of things. But what they're looking for is feed them with your food. What do you do? Pay them. So some of them used to have a line of wealth. I'll give you an example in the Bible. A common example some of you know. Of a nation. Can I or may I? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Matthew 19 verse 21. Matthew 19 verse Let's begin from 66. He says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, this is an Ethan. I want to show you something about the Ethan guy. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may attain, obtain eternal life? Huh? Next line. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? This is Jesus saying, There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, if thou, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Next line. Why is he giving him the commandments? Because he's an Eastern under the commandments. He's under the law. He's not ministering to a man under the grace. Understand this. He's not ministering to a man under grace. Now you find an ignorant guy saying, but you see God say keep the commandments. And that's right. Who was he speaking to? Let's continue. He said unto him, which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, which is okay. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Shalt not bear false witness. Next line. Honor thy father, mother, and thou shalt do. Love your neighbors. Thou shalt love yourself. The young man said unto him, listen to the Ethan, all these things I have kept from my youth. Why? Because the sons of the Jews, devout, the sons of the Pharisees and Sadducees, a group of lines there, particularly the Pharisees or some of the Jews that were devout of the system, wanted to raise their own children in a certain way that was morally straight. But they're not necessarily going to be Pharisee. The boy doesn't wish to be putting on these girdles, eh? those white things they put on. Eh? He doesn't enjoy that line, but he still wants to stay pure and borrow everything the Pharisee guy had. And remember, these guys also have feasts. Eh? Expiation, Purim, eh? all of these lines, Passover, they even celebrate the... In fact, Pharisees were more, they were more passionate with external forms of worship. You understand? The Sadducees also were, but the Pharisees were more. Sadducees were just more on the lines of purity. In fact, once I read somewhere where Sadducees could not even eat food without bathing. I mean bathing. <laughs> Same principle, Wudu. Those things of going in the prayer. Same principle. Wudu ngatona saba, ngatona sala. Masoka kola chi? Wudu. Same principle. Makabiz. Maka. Emeka. Also to speak. You understand? They also wash their places before they... So there's a line where they sit. But if, if you're that, you just wash your hands, Burundi, three times, the ears, the nose, bichi, bichi, you'll be clean and righteous to go before God. Eee, thank God. For you, even if you don't bathe and you just, mm, you just say, Shapatala, Harambe, and God here. Come as you are. Yangunga Bori. Oh, oh, now you're going to go to Nyanga Boyagara. Dembele. See, I didn't say, yes, Wakwagara. So did you bathe before you came to church? Some of you did. Thank God for your drunk. Then you come and pray. Praise the Lord. So anyways, come back. So these were people who are raised from their youth. They don't want to take the line of being a Pharisee. They don't want to scribe and teach rabbinic lines, but they want to stay in the faith. So they raise. So this guy from his youth, he has what? He has what? 
kept all of these things. This is an instant. Next slide. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt to be perfect, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have to, uh, yeah, treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Remember, they have money. They are doing every right thing, but they have money. Because they are paid to do it. You get them coming from? What does the next line say? But when the young man had that saying, he went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now they are not even talking about the agenda. They are talking about some Eastern rich boy, okay? Because that was the part where he had obeyed all the Ten Commandments, but God shows him a, a loophole in his principles. To actually tell him, hey, you think you're smart? You think you're smart? Let me show you what you're looking at. You love money. And the guy truly loves his man and said, no, nah, I can't accept your God. He walks away. You're tigger and age. You see where I'm coming from? So, Abrahamic, to the propheticism, from the propheticism to the mosaic principles, from the mosaic principles to the rabbinic, which are teaching us the law, and then from the rabbinic to so the sects are the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes. So what is the Judistic school of thought? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. What is Judaism? I want you to, to understand what Judaism is. Or Judaism. I want you to understand Judaism. So, I just wanted to take some time to just lay down the general creed of Judaism. And then you see exactly how they think. You'll understand why certain people are still legal in this generation. This is a creed that the Judists have had. Even when you read about the reformed Judists, you realize that there are certain things and form and castes they have except because it, reformed Judaism did not even come from, each, from, from Israel. It came from Austria, America, few places of Germany, and France. So France, Germany, Austria, America, those are the guys who got what you call the reformed Judaisms, or Judaism speech. The reformed Judists. They are not original from Jerusalem. But even though they are there, they still behold this creed up to the letter, except that they added on issues of, you don't necessarily need to call the worship place a synagogue. You can call it anything. You understand? So you understand some churches that still call their churches synagogue. You see where it's coming from? You, you see where it's coming from? They borrow, they borrow certain things. That's why some of you, if you recall the original guy who started the synagogue thing, he always used to put on white all through. You remember? And then he puts on a certain cabal here. He's pure. He's righteous. You get where I'm coming from? You get my idea. But some people just see and they say, hey, synagogue. It's not just synagogue. There's a line of thought, okay? The reformed ones say, okay, you don't need synagogue, you can do this. But the reformed ones took so much a line of now creating what, like, forms of Bible school and stages a man has to go through to be approved truly, a judistic rabbi or a teacher or anything. But they still hold their own thing. They are antichrist all through, by the way, so to speak. Why? Because the Bible says a man should not prophesy covering his head. This is Jesus speaking. He says a man should not prophesy covering his head, for he does not honor his head if he covers it. Why, likewise, a woman should not prophesy not covered. Because if she prophesies not covered, she does not honor her head. Now, God says a man to honor his head must prophesy with her without a covering. But a woman to honor her head, the husband, she must prophesy with a covering. You get the principle. Woman cover, husband don't. Those rabbis of theirs, they still have a white, a black thing on their head. They refuse to remove it. That's how you tell rabbi teachers. That means they don't honor Christ. Why don't they honor Christ? If you read the creed, you'll understand. So let's have the list of creeds, the general creed of the Judaism, okay? One. They say, I believe with a true and perfect faith that God is the creator, whose name is blessed, governor, maker of all creatures, and that he has wrought all things, worketh and shall work forever. Do you agree with that? I agree also. Don't fear everything. <laughs> I'm not trying to trick you. Do you agree with that? I agree also. Next slide. Two. I believe with perfect faith that the creator, whose name is blessed, be blessed, 
is one and that such a unity as is in him can be found in none other that he alone has been our God and is forever and shall be. Do you agree? I also agree. Next slide. I believe with a perfect faith that the creator whose name be blessed is not corporeal, not to be comprehended with any bodily properties and that there is no bodily essence that can be likened to him. Okay? Some of you agree, some of you don't agree. I know where you're coming from. Okay? So some of you don't agree, you actually say you can't create something and call it God. You're right in that instance. But it's saying here that God cannot have any bodily instance that can be likened unto him. That means no man can have a body and say he's God. Is it true or not true? It's not true. For ye are gods. Now do you see those guys later with that school of thought come to Jesus and tell him, Hey, blasphemy! Why do you say ye are a god or ye are a son of God? God does not produce something the Muslims believe. So they can't believe God can have a body. Now, do you realize that some schools of thought, even the Pentecostal line, still say, you can't say that you are a God. You can't say that God can have your body. They cannot. Because they don't believe anything in like an instance can carry a body and still be God. They say God is too big to take on a certain. So when you start the stories of he took on the form of man and dwelt among men, that's why you cancel the Judaistic guy. He says, no, no, God can't take on any form of body likened to a man. So do you realize that that thing of Jesus came in the flesh? They don't believe it. They don't believe that the Messiah came in the flesh. They believe if Jesus should come back, he must come back in a certain celestial, not a human body. They can't believe God can dwell in a human body. Now, even today in the Pentecostal lines of men who are tongue speaking and spirit filled, if you say you are a God, you are a problem. So you understand where you're coming from? They borrowed some line of Judicism, which Judicism also were influenced a bit by the Hellenists, and which, you understand, if God has truly said that I shall send thee, I shall come. I shall send thee a counselor. He shall be Emmanuel, the one with us. The Judistic guy would say, no, he has not yet come. Because we don't believe anything in the body calling itself God. That's why Jesus, at a particular point when they start to fight him, blasphemy, you're saying this and that, he asks them, is it not written in your law that ye are gods? But you die like me, amen. He doesn't want to put it in the grace message. He put it in their legal faces and say, is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law? Do you understand? It's me saying it because I'm, I can You see, grace and truth came by Christ. So you'll understand. By the time we're done by that, you realize that the grace message is Jesus. Okay? So the Bible says the law came by Moses and grace and truth came by Christ. So when Jesus speaks the dispensation of the grace and you're speaking of a line where God can dwell in flesh, they don't believe in that lichen place of God being represented by any body. You understand? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For the law, John 1, 17, write it, was by Moses. That grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He asked them in John 10, 34 to 36. He says, Jesus answered unto them, is it not written in your law? Let's begin from 28. Yes, it will make sense. And I give unto them eternal life. Who is giving unto eternal life? Jesus. You see that? But you see the Bible says Jesus is saying, I give unto them what? Eternal life. This is a man in the body. This is a man in the body saying, I give eternal life. In a human body. Remember our creed, the other side says, we cannot believe that God can be represented by anything like unto a body. Okay? Now, you see, I believe in the perfect faith that the creator whose name is blessed is not corporeal not to be comprehended with any bodily property that there is no bodily essence that can be likened unto him. Okay? But there is a man saying that I give unto them eternal life. Uh-huh. Continue. My father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of mother's hand. I and my father are one. <laughs> you are one with a guy who cannot be represented by bodily properties. What does the next line say? Then the Jews took stones again. They had to take stones to stone him. They had to take stones. You're blaspheming our third creed. 
So you see where Paul was? So do you understand why they can, they can refuse you and then call you cult easily because you said you are gods? Do you understand why some people when you say you are gods you already have become cult or rotten, they excommunicate you? Understand they still have a judistic line. It's inside their bones. It's inside their bones. Then he asked them, of many good works have I done? Showed you from my father. Which of those works do you stone me of? I've done many things from my father. I'm a seed of God. He's saying I'm a seed of God. I've done more stuff. What are you stoning me for? Next slide. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. You're a man. Why do you make yourself God? Our creed tells us God can't dwell in a man. He can't even be likened to anybody in a human body. What is that? <laughs> is it not written? He asks them now. Okay? See this smart guy. I love you. He says, is it not written in your law that I say that ye are gods? Next line. If you call them gods and to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father sanctified and sent him into the world that thou blasphemest because I said I'm a son of God. Remember, you even claim the line of being sanctified. They are the separated ones. You are claiming their position. Huh? Let's see the next line. If I do the works of my father, believe me not. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. Okay? But if I do, thou believe me. If I do, though you believe me not, believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Is there any other verse? Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized and there he abode. You see, they wanted to arrest him. So, if you see certain men arresting other people because they're saying you are God, understand where it's coming from. It's a Judistic, Hellenistic point of view. It's what they believe. Now, it has come even in 2014, there are men who go to Bible school and they don't study enough to know the difference. So, do you realize that even the works could not validate Jesus? Consequent point, they do not believe in miracles. They don't believe in miracles. Some of us know of a guy who has been attacking us, never met me, he has never had me teach, but he has started to say, Apostle Grace says that all diseases can be healed. But this is what we think. He wrote it clearly on Facebook and said, even though Jesus said that he heals all disease, we believe that not all diseases can be healed except in the time after the millennial. Is that not so, Brian? Did he say after the millennial? So which school of thought was he holding? Judaism. They don't believe in divine healing. They don't believe that Jesus can heal. He's not even yet in the body. This thing you're saying has healed in the body is not God. It's blaspheming God. So when the real Jesus comes, he shall heal. You understand? So anything that came before that in the body is not Jesus. The Jesus they believe must have a celestial body, not a terrestrial. Not human body. That's why the man in his Facebook wall says, in the post millennial, when Jesus comes back, all disease shall be healed. That man is Judas. Okay? But the people he's speaking to, and on Facebook there are these young kids who are saying, Pastor tell these people. Tell them the truth. You are a man of God. God sent you to teach us the truth. But what is he teaching them? Judistic. And that man claims Jesus came. Oh, does he claim Christ is? Is come? You see, is he saved? No, no, no. I'm not judging. Is that man saved? But he's a pastor. Who says he's saved? Okay. If he's truly saved, then he's ignorantly foolish. If he's truly saved, he's ignorantly foolish. That's why when you debate with him, he asks you, which Bible school did you go to? That's his line already. He already says, which Bible school did you go to? Why? Because his line of approval, Reformed Judaism, is to the lines of how much Bible school you've had. Principle. But there's people here who don't even know the difference of what I'm talking about. What more of a color? No, no, no. Brother, I have known these things for eight years. You are just knowing them now. So how ahead am I from you? Oh, how much have I studied after? You understand where I'm coming from? Some of us just stay. 
humble enough to give you what you need. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, there are certain things we have not taught. Not because we don't know them, but because to some of you they are too heavy. Okay? But now I've realized, let us teach our people. Hey, let them know the truth. So that you can meet like a Bible school guy and sort him from Hellenism. How and Yini? You understand where I'm coming from? So, first creed. I believe with a perfect faith, the Creator, whose name be blessed, to be the first and the last, that nothing before Him, and that He shall abide the last forever. I believe that also, don't you? Fifth. I believe with a perfect faith that the Creator, whose name be blessed, is to be worshipped and none else. Is that true? I believe also. Six. I believe with a perfect faith that all the words of the prophets are true. Do you believe that? I believe also. All the prophets spoke true because they were inspired, not of their own selves. The Bible says that they did not speak with their own mouth or their own inspiration. No scripture is of private interpretation. But the Bible says that the prophets of old spoke as they were given utterance. As like the book of Peter says. Read the most interesting creed. Seven. Most interesting. I believe... Mr. Barasa, I believe with a perfect faith that the prophecies of Moses, our master, may he rest in peace. I believe that the prophecies of Nabi Muhammad, peace be upon him. You get the difference? Do you realize they always have a peace be upon him? May he rest in peace. They are not even sure whether he rested in peace. You see, so how can they believe in the transfiguration? They're not even sure the guy left the ground. Same way the Muslims are. They still pray for Muhammad. Why? Because they peace be upon him. They don't know whether the guy made it or he didn't. So, that's the line of the Muslim. Alhamdulillahi, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi, Rahman Rahim. There's that bit where they say, there's something the Muslims used to say, that they believe in the only one true Allah, and the one and Muhammad is prophet. That's the only thing they believe about. Muhammad Dara, Sulullah, <laughs> and the prophet of God. Okay, let's continue. Uh -huh. I believe that with a perfect faith that the prophecies of Moses, our master, may he rest in peace, were true. I also believe they were true. But see the next line. That he was the father and chief of all wise men that lived before or ever shall live. <laughs> Moses is the wisest thing that ever happened to this earth, shall be the wisest man that ever happened to this earth, and will always be the wisest man that ever happened to this earth. Nobody. Nobody. Same thing with Islam. Muhammad is the last and greatest prophet of Islam. None before, none after. Same thing. Judaism, Hellenistic, Maccabees, Makkah. You understand? You see, are you making sense now? Washing legs and cleansing, self-purifying, putting on white. These guys with their white kanzus. Same things. It's just a bunch of guys who borrowed from everything. You understand? Hey, you are believing in Jesus. Hey, we also have him. He's a prophet. Uh, what do you believe in? You believe in the earth. We still have him. You, know, you get it? Yeah. So, how can you say that you believe that nobody shall ever live before him? He is the chief of all wise men and he was the father. So, their father is Moses. Now, where is Jesus? They actually say, if Jesus lived in the body, Moses was wiser. So what do we take? Moses' doctrine, not the grace. You understand where I'm coming from? Eight. I believe with a perfect faith that all of the law, which at this day is found in our hands, was delivered by God himself to our master Moses. God's peace be with him. I also agree. Next line. I believe with a perfect faith that the same law is never to be changed, nor any other to be given us of God. You see that? They don't believe that the law of Moses should ever be changed. Now, when Jesus comes and tells you, now I give thee a new law, it is not. <laughs> love your God with all your heart and with all your soul and love your neighbors, you love yourself. For them they believe no other law shall be given except our Father, Musa. Now do you realize that even the Muslims borrow from Moses a lot? You'll understand this. They believe in the perfect faith that the same law is never to be changed, 
nor any other to be given to them of God whose name be placed. That means they believe God will never send any other law. So this thing you call Jesus to them is he's not even there. Next slide. 10. I believe with a perfect faith that God whose name be blessed understandeth all the works and thoughts of men as it is written in the prophets. He fashioned their hearts alike and he understands all their works. I also believe that. Next slide. 11. I believe with a perfect faith that God whose name be blessed will recompense good to them that keep his commandments and will punish them who transgress them. There is no place of believing in the Lordship of Jesus. The issue is do good, you'll be rewarded. Don't do good, you'll die. Same thing with the Muslims. I call of Runji, Allah Alimu Empire. Ghana, there'll be to damnation. Same thing with some of these Christians who say they are born again. Some of them, you either do right and go to heaven, or you don't do right and go to heaven. So Jesus tells you, the world shall be judged of sin because they believe not. John 16, let's begin with 8. And when he is come, okay, this is a prophecy, he will reprove the world of sin. Who is that? Jesus. Okay? And of righteousness and of judgment. Uh huh. Next line. Next line. Of sin because of righteousness because and what? And you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now, according to the mind of Christ, the prince of this world and everyone who believes in him, doesn't matter how good they've done, they're already judged. According to the mind of Christ, anybody that believes is already delivered from sin. They can't accept that because it's not reasonably true. But remember, many of these things that were given were by reasoning out. Hellenistically. Reasoning them out. It's good for a man to be on a cross. He has been stealing all his years and he makes one statement, remember me. And that man goes just like that. Where is my Ethan who has kept all these laws since he was a youth? Where is my separated Pharisee who is a scribe and has studied the laws? Where is my Sadducee? So you are as though you're removing an entire government. Now, grace, law message is no longer different opinions and schools of thought. These are principalities fighting you. Because you're, you're killing their order. You're killing their order. They set this order way older than you were here. 104 BC, they were already there. Doing their business. That's why when Jesus comes in, he finds the Pharisees already established. They came before him. They were there. Before Christ, they were already established in their own systems. You see where I'm coming from? So when the Bible says of sin, let's go back to, again, where we were. Let's read it in the message version. Uh-huh. When he comes, he'll expose the order of the godless world's view of sin. You see, that's why I like this guy. He says when he comes, he'll expose the error of the godless world's view of sin. That means it is no longer sin as according and pattern and principle, but it's sin according to how they view sin. Okay? Righteousness and judgment. Next slide. He'll show them that their refusal to believe in me, Jesus, is their basic sin. That righteousness comes from above where I am with the Father and out of their sight and control. It's not in their control and sight. Righteousness comes from the Father. Next line. Next line. That judgment takes place as the ruler of this godless world is brought to try and convicted. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. You see who he's speaking to? It's too deep. You're judistic. You're judistic guys. Binene. So when today I tell you that now your view of sin is not God's view of sin. That which is done in faith is truth, and that which is not done in faith is sin. Ha, I wish I could explain this, but you're judistic. It's too much, you can't bear it. It's too heavy. He just throws a line for one who reads to understand. You now to understand where it was coming from. But you see, they realize that their basic sin was not these patterns that men created from the Talmud, the Hadith, eh? Halakha, and all these other things of Moses, their father, being the wisest man that shall and is and will ever be, and that Christ is not yet come to them. It's not that school of thought. Now Christ is come, and there are men who are believing on Jesus, and he's telling them the truth. 
The true line of sin on judgment on a Christian is if you never believe. But if you believe, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. For the law of the life-giving spirit has set them free from the law of sin and death. Then they go back to the reasoning of the Hellenists. Remember, the philosophical lines of schools of thought are validating action, reaction. Think, therefore you act. Input, output. Principle. You understand? Is in their head. How can you say you have not done any good thing and you're saying you're going to heaven? No. Cannot happen. Pharisee has done it for so long. Essen has done it for so long. Sadducee has done it for so long. Now the people already were confused. I know why. Because I'm killing your schools of thought now. I'm just... All of those things you have been thinking... I'm cancelling things in the head. Let's continue with the creed. Eight. I believe with the perfect faith that all the law which is at this day is found in our hands as was delivered by God himself to our master. That one we believed it. Let's continue. I believe with the perfect faith that the same law is never to be changed. That one we didn't believe it. But let's continue. I believe with the perfect faith, 10, that God, whose name be blessed, understandeth all the works and thoughts of men. As written, he first, that's okay, we believe. 11. I believe with the perfect faith that God, whose name be blessed, will recompense good to them. I've explained that and keep his commandments and will punish them who transgress them. Next line. I believe with the perfect faith that the Messiah is yet to come. And although he retards his coming, yet I will wait until he comes. There are even emotion in that bit. He will come. He will what? He has retarded. He, he has delayed. But I will wait. Jacqueline Gidia Mokama. Now, for us, we are expecting for the return. For them, they are expecting his coming. You understand? 13. I believe with a perfect faith that the dead shall be restored to life when it shall seem fit unto God, the Creator, whose name be blessed and memory celebrated without end. Amen. You see? That's okay. That one I can also believe it, that the dead shall be restored to life. Okay? This time, according to faith. You believe. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, this is Paul, original, before conversion. That is Paul, original, before conversion. Plus the Hellenistic line. And remember, he's philosophical also. Why? Because he's stuck with the wisdom of the Greek. That's why at a particular point he tells you, the Greek seek after wisdom, the Jews seek after science. Yes, do the miracles, let the lame walk, let the blind see, raise the dead, but be smart also. Be smart. Understand this right from letter, that if a man comes to reason it out, and he's Hellenistic, or carries a Greek school of thought, reason Christ out for him. If he comes with the lines of signs, miracles, and wonders, do the signs, men shall believe. But for those who refuse to believe the signs, the wisdom is there. Now, the Bible says you cannot be without wisdom. You must have wisdom, the Bible says, like them that are without. Praise the Lord Jesus. You're blessed. In the name of Jesus, you're blessed above. You're blessed beneath. You're blessed going in. You're blessed going out. You're strengthened. You're established. You're increasing in wisdom and glory. You're increasing in power. You're increasing in authority. You're increasing in influence. You're increasing. You're setting faces. You're establishing men. You're multiplying people. You're building lives. You're changing wherever you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.